In this lecture, we will see the parallel operation of DC generators. That includes the parallel operation of series generator, shunt generator and compound generator. And also we will see what is the need of equalizer bars in DC generators during their parallel operation. Okay, these are the major contents that we will discuss in this video. So, before going to see the parallel operation of these generators, we must aware about the need of parallel operation of DC generators. Okay, here you can see some lists about the need of parallel operation. So, the first one is the continuity of service can provide. We know that Continuity is one of the important requirement for the electrical system. If the power plant can, if the power plant has only one unit or a single unit, then the generator is not able to provide a continuous power during the peak load and during the light load time. So it is necessary more than one generators so more than one generators are necessary to connect in parallel in order to provide a continuous supply if any fault occurs in any generator that can be the fault of a prime mover or any winding problem or any kind of problems may occurs in any one of the generator then if they are if more than one generators are in parallel there the continuity of the supply will not disturb we can provide a continuous supply if any one of the generator get damaged or something like that so it is necessary for the parallel operation of DC generators during the faulty conditions or something like that so continuity of the service can provide the next point is efficiency the overall we know that the peak load time is very different and light load time is different we know that peak load may occurs during day times or evening times and the light load time may be in the night so during these different loads load conditions the entire power plant must be able to provide the required load to the load current to the load so that if there are less number of generators which are connected in parallel it may be a difficult one so that in order to improve the efficiency of the plant system it is very necessary more than one generators and number of generators that is, if there is a number of generators then that is very better so if the generators are connected in parallel or if many number of generators are there we can easily maintain a particular supply of electrical power during the light load time and also during the peak load time also so a continuous supply can provide efficiency will be very high because load is different at every time during the day so based on the change in loads you can supply enough power to the load so we can say that the efficiency of the power plant will be very high when the number of generators are connected in parallel there so that is the point about the second so, okay second case then the third case is maintenance and repair we know that the generators are it is very necessary to make a maintenance or a repair during that can be a, a weekly maintenance or a monthly maintenance or yearly maintenance if it is needed we can make the maintenance in every day so the maintenance and the repair for the requirements is very necessary so if you want to repair or if you are going to maintain 
a the first generator then that may be shut off shut down and we can repair it during that time the continuity of the supply can maintained by other generators if they are connected in parallel so during the maintenance and repairing of any one of the equipments the supply of electrical power will not disturb if enough generators are present there so it is needed the parallel operation of generators that's all about the third point and the i listed uh, one point that is addition to the plants we know that the population is increasing day by day so it is very necessary to provide sufficient electrical power to the consumers in order to make it sure that we can provide the electrical supply to the consumers without any disturbance to the existing system we can add many generators in parallel to the existing system so addition of the plant is very important for that parallel operation is very necessary so the last point uh, here it is non availability of single large unit there is a major issue if we are using a single unit for the entire system already we discussed that if that system get faulty due to any reason then the total plant will get blacked out in order to avoid such type of situations and by providing the continuous supply of electricity so to make the continuous supply of power we will connect number of small units in parallel so parallel operation is very needed due to these reasons okay i listed few reasons you will get many reasons if you refer google okay and next we can discuss what are the major conditions that is necessary for the parallel operation of dc generators okay the first point is the generation voltage and no load characteristics must be the same okay the generation voltage if we are connecting number of generators in parallel each generators can have a particular capacity to generate voltage and that capacity of generation voltage of all generators must be same and their no load characteristics must be the same okay and the next point is the polarity must be identical okay if you are connecting the generators to the bus bar the positive polarity of the bus bar must be connected to the positive terminal of the generator and the negative terminal of the generator must be connected to the negative terminal of the bus bar and if you are connecting these generators in parallel the polarity must be identical and the third point is the armature resistance may be equal if the armature resistance are equal then each generators can share the load equally so it is necessary to make the load sharing equal the resistance of armature resistance may be identical or that must may be equal so the next point is the machine must be identical machine must be identical means the shunt generator if the shunt generator must be connected in parallel with another shunt generator we cannot connect a shunt generator in parallel with a compound generator or a series generator so the uh, the identity of the generator must be satisfied so shunt generator must be connected to shunt generator means shunt must be parallel with another shunt generator and compound must be shunt with must be parallel with another compound generator and series in the case of series also we can satisfy this condition so these are the major conditions that must satisfy during the parallel operation so we can say that the overall operation 
it is necessary to make the reliability of operation during the peak load time and during the light load time so parallel operation is needed and based on these concepts we can discuss about each generators in detail so we will discuss the parallel operation of shunt generators first okay in this circuit you can see two generators are connected in parallel to a bus bar it is connected okay already the generator you can see more more than two generators you can connect in parallel here i drawn the circuit for two generators okay already first generator that is g1 is connected to the bus bar and here we are going to connect the second generator that is g2 we are going to connect to the bus bar so already we studied that the polarity of the generator must be identical so the positive terminal of the generator must be connected to the positive terminal of the bus bar and the negative terminal of the generator uh, sorry it is negative the negative terminal of the generator is connected to the negative terminal of the bus bar so already we connected in that by obeying that condition so here you can see two switches s1 and s2 okay here we will discuss about the second generator that is g2 first we can speed speed up the armature of the second generator up to its rated speed if the generator is rotating about its rated speed then we can close the switch s2 and we can complete this circuit we can complete this circuit from minus terminal to the positive terminal we can connect a voltmeter in series with this generator this voltmeter will reads some readings but if the excitation of the incoming generator that is g2 is changed till the voltmeter reads zero so if the voltmeter is zero reads zero then we can say that the voltage of the generated voltage of g2 is same as that of the bus bar voltage then we can close the switch s1 at this condition we can say that the generator g2 is ready to make the parallel operation or which is already paralleled with g1 okay paralleled with g1 for for this first we can close the switch s2 when the generator is under rated speed and we can connect a and we can read this voltmeter if it reads zero then we, by adjusting the field of excitation we can make the voltmeter reading we can make the voltmeter reading zero when the voltmeter reads zero then we can close the switch s1 then it is in parallel with the existing generator g1 or it is parallel with the bus bar we can say that but the thing is that under these conditions the voltage of g2 is same as that of g1 and that is same as that of bus bar but we can't say that the generator g2 is ready to provide load to the bus bar why we know that the current will flow from a higher potential to a lower potential but here the potential of the generator g2 
is same as that of the potential of bus bar so the generator the second generator which is not ready to provide necessary load to the bus bar so make it sure that to provide load to the bus bar the induced voltage in the g2 in the generator g2 that must be higher than that of the bus bar voltage so in order to make the higher voltage in generator g2 than that of the bus bar we can adjust to the field excitation so field excitation can improve till the generator is able to provide necessary load to the bus bar so by adjusting the field current we can improve the generating voltage of g2 and thereby they are able to provide necessary load to the bus bar so that is the condition now we can say that during this stage make it sure that the voltage of generator g1 that is not changing so in this way we can connect a generator in parallel with the bus bar or parallel with the existing bus existing generators okay during the parallel operation of shunt generators how we can say that it will share the loads equally we can consider the case of first generator in the case of generator g1 what will be the terminal voltage terminal voltage v will be equal to generated voltage minus voltage drop across the armature so that is ia r ia1 ri1 okay e1 is the induced voltage of the first generator g1 ia1 is the armature current flowing through the arm first generator and ra1 is the armature resistance of the first generator so the terminal voltage can be like this okay what about the second generator g2 the terminal voltage we know that the terminal voltage v is same for every generators when they are connected in parallel so terminal voltage v1 is equal to e2 minus i a2 r a2 okay we can equate this because terminal voltage is same for both generators g1 and g2 so we can write right here e1 minus ia1 ra1 will be equal to e2 minus ia2 ra2 from these details from these details we can write that i a1 is equal to e1 minus v divided by r a1 and i a2 is equal to e2 minus v divided by r a2 okay the change in voltage divided by the resistance of that particular armature if r a1 is equal to r a2 and e1 is equal to e2 is equal to e then we can see that i a1 will be equal to i a2 that means for a shunt generator if there are number of generators each generator will share the loads equally that is the major points about the shunt generators we know that shunt generator has a slightly drop dropping characteristics so based on the characteristics of the shunt generators we can say that if the number of generators are connected in parallel each generator will share loads equally so that is the major point about 
the parallel operation of DC shunt generator. And now here we are going to see the parallel operation of based on this we are going to see the parallel operation of series generators. Okay. We know that for a series generator the series field winding is connected in parallel series with the armature and that polarities are already obeyed. Here you can see two generators in parallel which provide necessary load to the supply and the point is that if the generator E2 is E2 provide more EMF than E1 then what will happen the current through the field winding will increases in the case of G2 the current will increases than that of the generator G1 and this will lead to increase the flux in the generator G2 and finally again the induced voltage E2 will increase and additional current will flow through the field winding and that current will circulate through this region and at the next time this current again will improve the flux and thereby E2 will increase during that time during this time the induced voltage at E1 will decrease so the field current will decrease flux will decrease and finally again the value of E1 will decrease current I1 will decrease and the flux will decrease this will be a continuous process and finally we can say that the generator G1 will work as a motor because they are not able to provide necessary load to the bus bar but they will take some loads from the bus bar so we can say that the E1 will work as a motor at this condition so in order to solve this problem due to the circulating current E2 will provide full current or full load to the bus bar so in order to avoid this situation a solution is that we can connect a thick heavy copper bar in we can connect the armatures of two generators with a heavy copper bar heavy copper bar is nothing but a conductor or having low resistance path so let us again discuss about the things if the generator G2 is supplying more current than G1 then what will happen current will increases and that increased current will shared to the next generator also through this equalizer bar okay, this is the equalizer bar so if the generator is supplying more current if G2 is supplying more current due to higher E2 then that current will some current will partially shared to the next generator and the generated current will directly go to this generator through this equalizer bar and the rest current will flow through the series field windings so that the reversal action of the generator G1 can avoid by using this equalizer bars okay the equalizer bars are connected at the end portion of the armature both the armatures are shunted by this equalizer bars okay so equalizer bars are necessary for the parallel operation of series generators but in common case the series generators are not suitable for the parallel operation because they are rising characteristics
okay now let us discuss about the parallel operation of compound generators okay here you can see the circuit diagram for the parallel operation of compound generators here generator g1 is connected in parallel with g2 and here you can see the equalizer bars that is needed to satisfy the parallel operation of compound generators because the presence of series field winding is there because if the generator e2 is having more voltage than the generator g1 then what will happen the current flowing through the g2 will slightly increases than g1 and this will lead to strength uh, uh, the strengthening of the this series field windings and thereby more current will induce in generator g2 than g1 and that generated current will partially or some part of that current will flow through the armature or the, the series field of the first generator that is g1 so additionally induced or generated armature current will directly flows to the next generator so that the currents shared by these generators we can say that the current shared at that time will be equal so in order to make the proper load sharing equalizer bars are very necessary for compound generators mainly in over compound and level compound generators for the stable operation over compound and level compound generators are needed generators equalizer bars are needed but for under compound generators we know that over compound generators level or flat compound generators and under compound generators these are the three categories of compound generators and in over compound and level compound generators for the parallel operation equalizer bars are necessary because of their rising characteristics but for under compound generators like shunt generators they do not need equalizer bars because like shunt generators under compound generators have a stable operation and they have a slightly dropping characteristics so they may share the loads equally if there are n number of generators they will share their loads equally so that both these generators do not need equalizer bars but others are needed in the case of other generators equalizer bars are very needed for their parallel operation otherwise the generator may get damaged okay these are the major facts about the parallel operation of generators okay thank you